everybody welcome back to my channel today we're going to do a diy dollar tree sign inspired diy that sounds silly right um but we're going to use this bunny from the dollar tree this is like the three-dimensional i pulled his eyeball off he used to have two we're going to use this hat from saint patrick's day i told you guys in my shop with me i mean my hauls that i was going to be using it we're also going to use this burlap from the dollar tree this is like that teal pretty aqua color as well as some of the cotton twine um, this is an option you can always cover the bunny's ears in natural burlap if you choose um, and then we're going to use some either polka dotted burlap i actually have an, a dollar tree easter fabric and some pink and then these are from the dollar spot at target from last year there are these little foam easter eggs um, and then you can use your cutting device as well as your gluing device. Now, if you can't find those little Easter eggs from the dollar spot, then you can use stickers, but I'll show you. That's to put the polka dots on his hat. And again, that's optional. Now there's, again, just like every DIY I feel like we do here, we try to give you some techniques, give you some ideas, and let you run with it on your own. So um, I'm D glittering the, this hat. The top, my top actually uh, came off the bottom, uh, one quarter of the way um, so instead of snapping it back on I just removed it the rest of the way but it basically has four little clips around the hat portion around the the, sh the, the chimney part of the portion um, that connects it to that bottom ring so you just want to separate it because the glitter is different um, it's not one continuous piece it's two continuous pieces it's actually three because the black is separate as well and I just left the buckle on the black because I may want to use it for maybe I was thinking maybe like uh, Thanksgiving, I might be able to use that to make like a buckle on a hat or something, all right? And now once we have all of the glitter removed, we're gonna remove the little pegs on the outside of the brim, as well as along the top of the hat. We are eventually gonna remove the ones from the bottom, but I left them just for now um, because I wanted to, uh, Basically, I didn't know if I was going to need them to hold the ribbon on, um, but we're going to remove them in a little bit. Now, the ears, we are going to cut the ears off. If you guys don't plan on saving this glitter, then you can just go ahead and cut the ears off with the glitter on it and then remove the glitter and then remove the glitter garland. But you know me, I like to repurpose everything. I don't really like to throw the the pieces in the garbage you know keep them out of the landfill use them for something else um so i have removed all of this white it removes fairly easy um these little pink inserts in their ears kind of pop out um, they're just little pieces of paper stuck behind four little plastic tabs um, and save those because we're going to use them to put back um, <laughs> and then we're just going to remove um, all of that white i wrap it up and i save it for other other diys Okay, and I just cut the ears off. They, uh, I left the piece of the cage actually on the uh, bunny head in case I want to use it for something else. Um, but that's okay that the two bottom pieces aren't connected to anything. Um, that's okay, it'll work out all right. So now we're gonna cut off all of the little tabs on this. Again, this is just an option if you want to cover these in burlap or any kind of white fabric, maybe the, uh, the microfiber car cloth would be really cute so that'd be like little fuzzy ears. Um, I just was gonna wrap mine in cotton twine just to add, push it a little towards the farmhouse look. Um, that was just my option. But if you go ahead and wrap these in, in, uh, in the fur, that would be really, really super cute and you wouldn't have to cut those tabs off. All right, um, but the next step I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna glue the, um, the backs of the pink ears to the pink ribbon. I probably should have put down my glue mat, which I didn't because the glue came through the burlap. Um, and then I'm gonna cut them out because again, I wanted this to be more pushed, pushed towards the farmhouse edge. So I'm gonna use the pink burlap as the inner ears um, instead of the pink glittery stuff, the glittery paper. All right, and you can just, you can not have to save those cardboards. You can just make your own if you want to. I just figured, hey, they fit in there. Let's let them fit in there. So as far as wrapping these in string, um, I would probably go ahead and remove those little tabs on the back uh, that were holding the paper down. I just didn't. And then one of the ears that I wanted to bend kind of looks like eh, a little fakakta in the back. So I would suggest if you are going to bend one of the ears down to go ahead and remove the tabs off the back of uh, these plastic ears. But I'm actually um, using the back side. So I didn't have to worry about all those little bumps that hold on to the hold on to the glitter um, and hold on to the other stuff. 
So just like everything that we wrap in string, when it starts to get narrow towards the top, that's when we start adding glue because we don't want the we want the, the string to be able to hold on there. And again, this is four times speed, so it looks like I'm going really fast, but I'm actually going really slow because you want to let the glue set up before you uh, wrap it a few more times. Though this is a very uh, easy project, it does have a lot of steps, it does have a lot of items, and it will take a little bit of time. What makes it easy is you don't need a huge skill level, I guess is what I mean. Okay, <laughs> all right, and then just fill in that top. And now we're just going to glue the inner ear back in, okay? And we're going to repeat that with the other ear. Um, there's sort of like a center piece that comes down. I glued the string to that before I wrapped it. And if you need to put a little glue across the bottom too to hold that bottom string in place, that also was very helpful. And for this, I made it even. I basically wrapped one row next to the other, but you really could have just gone whip, whip, whip and get it all like, you know, overlapped and overlaid. That looks really cute as well. Okay, haphazard, because that's what we want to say. And we're going to finish this off the same way. Again, once it's cooled down and dried, uh, we can go ahead and cut it off. Now, if you saw that on the back there, um, you can see like where the little stubs, the stubs were that were holding on the paper. Um, didn't let the string lay flat. And once we go in and bend that ear over, it will look a little like, you'll see a little spaces, but I don't care about it. It's not, it's not all that important to me. So as far as wrapping the hat is concerned, I knew that as we wrapped these sides, we were gonna overlay fabric. So we didn't have to worry about um, two layers on the sides, you know, on the shaft portion. But across the top, I wanted to make sure I had two layers of the burlap ribbon. The first one, I just left the, the, the I took the wires out, but I left the seam on because I was gonna cover it. Um, so I just put a bead of glue down the middle seam of the plastic cage. I made sure I put enough of the fabric over to hang over both sides and then I just put the second piece next to it and it and the two pieces side by side just fit the um, the actual width of the hat but for this second layer that we're going to put on we're going to cut the strings off like the edges off and um, you're we're probably not probably but you're going to need more than just the two pieces we're going to need two pieces plus the third one to fill in on the two sides okay and as you can see why we do two layers is I see there you can kind of see through it so what I've done is I've just cut the pieces the length a little bit wider than the base of the hat and then we're going to cut the wires off and fortunately there's a cage line there as well that's sort of in the middle which per works perfectly and we're just going to butt these edges right up next to each other and because that top is like domed it will like kind of fit next to each other but it will kind of uh hug it the next two pieces they won't be straight they'll be straight next to it but they'll actually kind of tuck under the ribbons a little bit on the sides so i just took a third piece um not too long i cut it in half um, after i cut off the wire edged ribbon and then i filled in the two sections there and then after I have the old pieces covered on the top then i went ahead and i um, glued all around um, basically all the ribbon that hangs over because I knew that I was going to cover it and I wanted to um, to go ahead and just glue it down so it would be easier to cover. Now, in all full disclosure, I've told you guys this lots of times. I usually only buy one set of something to make it. I make it. I learn how to do it as I teach it to you, which some people really like. Some people can't stand. So I apologize if you're one of these people who can't stand this. <laughs> But when I was trying to figure this out, I was trying to figure out the best way to wrap it. Should I wrap it from the skinny side on the bottom to the fat side on the top, the fat side from the top, the skinny side, the bottom. So um, not only do we have to figure out um, how, pe how wide the piece of ribbon is that we want, but we want to decide if we want to wrap from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom. Of course, depending on whether or not you want your ribbon overlapped on the top or on the bottom. So hindsight being what it is, um, I would have probably wrapped this the other way. I would have probably wrapped the um, top first, um, but because of the angle to which it goes down, um, but I didn't. And I also would have, in hindsight, um, cut this ribbon wire off on both sides. 
Okay, here's what I'm saying. If you noticed, I cut the ribbon in half, but I just used the half widths of ribbon. We've done this before in lots of DIYs that if, if a turn is so tight, then you need to have just little skinnier strips of ribbon. Um, this particular one um, w required that, but I only just left, basically I left the wire in it and I shouldn't have. Um, like I said, hindsight being what it was, I should have removed the, um, the wire edge from both sides and then cut it in half. And I would have wrapped from the top to the bottom. Now you saw that picture there. It's not my favorite. Once we put the polka dots on it and the ears and stuff, you don't really notice the hat so much. So I didn't f correct it. Um, honestly, it doesn't look that terrible with it on there, but hindsight being what it is, and if I'm teaching it to you, I would start wrapping from the top to the bottom and I would use a width of ribbon with both wire edges cut off and then cut in half or widths of ribbon. If it's easier to work in smaller sections, that'd be okay too. Now the original inspiration piece is a light blue hat with white polka dots and a purple bow. So since I wanted to use Dollar Tree products or dollar products, I went ahead and I made sort of a blue green hat with purple polka dots and then a white bow. So as you can see, I'm just randomly gluing these purple eggs onto the hat. No kind of pattern, rhyme or reason. All right. And now, see, I do learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I am now cutting the wire edge off of the ribbon for the, the brim that we're going to wrap the brim in. I've cut uh, a section of ribbon, probably, I don't know, two feet. I've cut the wire edge off of both, uh, the wire off of both edges, which I saved, by the way, because now that this is a cute blue wrapped piece of wire that we can use for tendrils or something else in the future. Um, but I've cut the, the wire off both edges and then I cut it in half down the middle. It doesn't have to be perfectly in half and you know that this will fray a bit. Um, so keep that in mind as well, all right? But because of the, the tightness of the curve of the hat, we definitely wanna make sure we cut this and use a narrow strip of ribbon. Now, instead of doing all this, if you guys wanted to use like a grow green ribbon or a sheer ribbon or any of the ribbons from the Dollar Tree that are already available, by all means, um, two, three rolls will probably be enough, depending on how you want to cover the top of the hat. Okay? And now this is just simple. I'm not even worrying about which is the original top and which is the original bottom. I'm just wrapping it um, as I go, pulling so that there's no gaps or buckles. Buckling, buckling, pickling, buckling, buckling. <laughs> there's no bumps and holes. How's that? <laughs> and then... Um, gluing in the beginning and then gluing at the end and then I'm gluing wherever two pieces need to be connected So what I ended up using was that one two piece of one about two foot section of ribbon And I ended up needing a little bit more which was fine. I just cut another little piece uh, cut the wires off of it and uh, Cut it down the middle. So I used it till I finished up Okay, and then I gave it a haircut Whenever I give my burlap a haircut, it always makes a haircut. It always makes me think of Melissa at Four Quarter Crafts, who always trims her jute whenever she cut wrap stuff in jute. And hi, Melissa. Um, so you're just gonna glue down the end here. Okay take it to the barbershop. So the glued end is now gonna be my underside, since this is gonna be a hat that stands up as part of decor. It's just gonna be like a standing hat. Um, so I made sure I put the glue side down or the, the, the glued end side down. I found the nicest front and I matched it up with the nicest front of the hat. Um, I actually started and ended in the back of the hat. So I made sure that that kind of like went towards the back before I started gluing the, um, the, the eggs on it, the polka dots on it. And now this is the ribbon I'm going to use to tie around the hat. Uh, I'm going to make what's going to look like a bow tie. Um, even though you can't see a ribbon band around the hat on the inspiration piece, um, I'm just going to go ahead and add one. All right, so I just cut a piece of this ribbon, probably only about three eighths of an inch wide. Um, and I wrapped it around there. And now I'm going to test that where I want my ears. The reason I'm doing that um, is because I wanted to know how wide to make my bow. On the inspiration piece, the bow is as wide as the outsides of the ears 
or on the insides of the ears so I wanted to make sure that it was uh, roughly around the same and I also wanted the ears to make sense so I told you I went ahead and I bent one of them um, like I said the back probably could have used some better stringing if I thought about it that I was going to bend it but the inspiration piece does have a bent ear and these plastic ears bent and stayed that way really well so so now I'm taking about a six inch piece of ribbon. I actually held it up to the hat to make sure it was wide enough and then I doubled it. And I've folded it over and then I've taken another little piece of ribbon, probably three or four inches, squished it and wrapped it around, twisted it a couple times and then glued it. Once the glue was uh, set, then I went ahead and I cut off the excess. And now I'm able to adjust the size of the ribbon by pulling on the extra piece on the inside as well as the extra piece on the outside. Um, just gluing down I, my, my center piece wasn't glued down properly um, so I'm just showing you here how I can adjust it to make the bow the size that I want and that bow right there I feel like has sort of like that bow tie feel um, so I went in and just figured out which one I wanted to you know which end I wanted to face up kind of made it one side flatter to just to show you um, and then I adjust it as you need. So I, I laid it on there. It was a little too wide for the ears. So I went ahead and I adjusted it a little smaller. Um, if you need to cut off any extra, you can. But you could just adjust it, adjust it. When you don't glue your ribbon closed, you have room to adjust it is really what my point is here, okay? And you wanna keep adjusting it until you get the look that you want, until you get the bow that you want, until you get the style that you want. Um, and that's what I'm doing here. And because this ribbon is a really, really slippery nylon um, or polyester, I'm once I get it to where I want it to, I'm going to add a little glue to hold it in its place. Um, because I did notice as I moved it, it kept opening on me. So I'm just going to do my final adjustments here, as you can see, um, creating the actual loops the way I want them and the little... Um, the little fold uh, that's in the front of the bow tie I want and then I've glued down the little uh, tails edges and then I cut off the excess and then I fluffed it up and that's finally the bow that we're after and then just add a little hot glue and glue it to the ribbon and that's it guys I know I think it's so cute I hope you guys do too and not a waste of your time if you have any questions at all please leave a comment leave them in the comments down below don't forget to share with friends and family anybody you know might be interested in making this silly hat to match this silly sign and if you haven't yet click subscribe and when you do a little bell will pop up when you ring that bell youtube will let you know whenever i upload a new video and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up we have lots more easter diys coming up okay as always take care god bless and we'll see you next time bye